Amen. You know, you're going to have a hard time following me today because there's some change-ups that I know that I'm, I'm doing. You know, I'm talking about the favor of God upon your life. And, I'm, and the favor of God, I, I'm, eventually when I get into my message, can you imagine? Eventually when I get into my message, I'll, sh I'll share six points of where the favor of God should be in your life. When the, and the number one uh, thing is it should be upon your family and surrounding your family, going before your family. But before I start there, I want to I wanna share a couple things. Um, one of them is this, is that um, your belief system. Do you believe, do you, where is your belief system? Do you be, totally believe in the Word of God? Okay. Do you believe Google better than the Word of God? Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. You know, I got this pain. Hey, Siri, I got this pain in my knee. What is it? I know people that do that. I, I was searching, and, and I think this is what's wrong with me. And I go, I was searching, and I know what, what the cure is. And they go, oh, what's the cure? By his stripes, you're healed. And so the belief system, see, I'll prove it to you. Some people believe that there was never, ever, ever a man ever put on the, on the moon. Some people believe that the earth is flat. Some people believe that it's round. Some people believe that there was a man put on the, on the moon. It, what, where is your belief system and what is it based on? Is it based on what the world sis, system says or is it based on, because I'm talking about favor and you got to get to a place that you either believe that the favor of God is upon you, surrounds you, goes before you, or you just believe your system. Yeah? It's so important. So, so important to know where you're, each person has a different belief system. I, I had the privilege, oh yeah, and I got another guy saved this week. Um, I had the privilege of um, some people came in here and they were selling uh, some steaks and fish and crabs and different things out of the back of their truck. It just reminded me of Russia. <laughs> back in the day, I used to buy gas out of the back of the truck and because the gas stations didn't have gas at that time. Remember those? How would you know? You guys weren't there. I got to talk to the Russians, right? You gotta, you're too young to know those days. And, I, and, and, Sveta, and I, when she took me to the first time to, uh, to um, we kind of pulled over and it was um, uh, on the side of the road and she says, as I'm driving, she says, we need to get gas. They're selling gas out of that truck. And I'm like looking at this truck, and it's got a canvas over. It's all closed up. It's, a, it's like a two-ton truck, but it's all closed up. And I was like, I says, excuse me? She says, pull over, pull over, quick, quick. So I pulled over. And, um, and I always carry jerry cans in the back of the car all the time. I mean, it's just a... Who remembers those days in, Irene, did, did you ever experience that? What? Wow. Anyways, yeah, they were selling gas. We negotiated. I bought two jerry cans worth of gas, continued on. I, I always had extra gas all the time. But in saying that, I'm talking to this guy that's selling, there was two of them that came in and and the one guy, he goes to a church in uh, Leduc, and the other guy goes to a church here in Edmonton. And uh, I, said, um, I said to him, I said, um, can I ask you a question? If you died today, do you know if you'd go to heaven? And, and he said, yeah, I, 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 I pretty well 98% know I'm going to heaven. I says, cool, based on what? Well, I've never been bad. I've never did anything wrong. And so, based on my good works, I'm getting into heaven. Now, 
That was his belief system, all right? I later learned that that belief system was literally preached in the church where he went to church. So I said, okay, I'm not there to argue. I says, can I show you, show you in the word that your good works won't get you into heaven? And I, would turn, and I says, look at here, Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9. And it says, you're saved by grace through faith not of your own works, because then you could boast. And so I said, your good works isn't going to get you into heaven. And it's only by, and then I went to Romans 10, 9 and 10, confessing with your mouth, believing in your heart. And uh, then I said in Romans 10, 13, that whomsoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. I said, I said to get into heaven, it's just simply a prayer, but believing the words. When I led him to the Lord, when I led him to the Lord, he was like, oh my goodness, what's this feeling? He says, I'm like a little weak. And I thought, that is the power of God when his belief system changed. It changed. And so I gave him a cross and, and gave him some books to read about becoming born again and stuff like that. And he said, um, and I, and I said, the number one step is you need to tell somebody else. And he says, yeah, I'll tell my wife. She's, she's a Baptist. And she goes to a Baptist church, and we go to her church, we go to my church. And I said, you go tell her she will hug you, she will kiss you, she will be rejoicing, because his belief system changed. See, it's the word of God that can change somebody's life. And, and even though you hear the word of God, doesn't mean that you will literally change unless you believe it. If you don't believe it, then it won't change you. That's where I say, you know, a receptive heart. Because you need, if you need, once you hear the word, are you going to apply it or are you not going to apply it? That's up to you. That's up to you, right? And, um, um, there, there's a story that, that, and I went looking for it. I'd heard it years ago, and, and I, I probably even shared it here, about two brothers that, that got raised by a dad that was abusive, beat them, told them they'd never amount to anything. They were terrible kids, and so on, and so on. And, and, um, and it was interesting because uh, the one, when they discovered it, the one was a, a multimillionaire that ran a company of multi-billions of dollars. Amazing. His brother lived on the streets. And so they asked this brother that was a multi-millionaire, he says, um, they said, um, like, how did you get to, to be at this place? He said, my dad beat me. He said, they, 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 I was beaten severely many times. And he told me I'd never amount to anything. I, I was a complete disaster and wish I was never ever born on this earth. And, and, and he was going through this and he says, I decided, I decided. See, it starts with a decision. I decided to prove my dad wrong. I decided to prove my past to be wrong. And I did everything that I knew to do to get to a place where I'm succeeding and successful. They found out that he had a brother and he lived on the streets and they went and asked him. They said, so, dude, how come you're on the streets? He says, because my dad beat me severely. Told me I'd never amount to anything. Wished I'd never been born. Whoa, sounds like the same words that his brother that was a multimillionaire, same words words but this one brother chose to begin to believe in himself believe that's where that bow and arrow believe in himself to be successful pulled that bow back and did everything the other one said I am here because of my dad's fault I am here because of the words that were spoken over me I'm here because and it's so interesting that you can, you, can, you can both be in the valley 
a baka, but it's where you choose whether you're going to get stronger and stronger to the place that you have victory, or you're going to re rehearse the curse. Even though you're born again, even though you're going to heaven, I run into Christians that rehearse the curse over and over and over, and it's like they set up the tent in that misery. They set up the tent in that grief. They set up the tent in, 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 in not letting it go, not allowing, because, I mean, Luke 4, 18 says that I've come to heal those that are brokenhearted. And every one of us ex experience brokenness at some point, some time. It's like, this young man, I mean, he was, what, 51 or 52 years old? Just a young guy, in my opinion. When, when I was that age, I was still rattling the world. <sighs> so young. And, it, and it's sad to me, it's sad to me that, that that life was cut short. Because there was so much more that God would have for him in his life. Amen. How far, how long, are, are, how, how much will you pull that bow back in your life to be successful? Remember I said, last week I grabbed that bow and arrow and I said, and I went like this and it just hung up. It didn't even go anywhere. And that's way, the way some Christians are. They're just hung up on the past, hung up on what their mom did, hung up on what their uncle did to them, hung up hung up, hung up, and they're not going through the valley. They're in the valley. And God wants you to go through the valley. He wants you to go to the other side. Amen? Amen. Let's, let's pull the, the bow this morning. Turn to the one on you choose, left or right, and say, say to them, I have the favor of God surrounding me and going before me in Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. If you don't, you that are watching, you don't know what I'm talking about, you got to watch last week's message because it's so important. You know, it, the, the most, one of the, one of the keys to being successful and knowing the favor of God is around you and surrounding you is that you got to confess it, you got to speak it out, and eventually you, you get it in your heart and when, when it drops from your mouth down to your heart and you begin to, re, you begin to um, it becomes a reality to you. I mean, I'll ask this question. Um, somebody, somebody somewhere, somehow, someplace came up to you and said, hey, you know what, the only way into heaven is, is by accepting Jesus Christ and saying this prayer, right? And you went, oh, yeah, okay. And, and you said the prayer, I'll guarantee you Monday, Tuesday, let's say it happened on a Monday. I'll guarantee you on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you had these thoughts that were bombarding you and going, I don't believe that you're really saved. I don't think that you're really. And, and how many of you said the salvation uh, prayer more than once? Yeah, a lot of you. Why is that? Because you, were, you confessed it but it wasn't a reality down here yet. And even though you confessed it and God seen you saved that moment, you didn't see yourself saved at that moment. Do you see what I'm saying? He sees you through the blood of Christ, but you see yourself like, oh, I don't think I'm really saved. Like, maybe I gotta say it. And when I tell people that you say this prayer, I say, you never have to say it again, ever. No, I'll say it every day. No, you never have to say it again. Because today was the miracle day that took place. You got born again. Amen? The words out of your mouth are very, very powerful. I mean, it, it talks about it. It talks about life and death are in the power of your tongue, right? And they reflect what you believe, and they will shape, and they will make your, your future and your destiny. Your words will. You'll either speak death over your projects. Oh my goodness, you know the economy. You know my business. It's not. A, 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 a. I, I run it. 
Greg, you, you, we run into people like that. And it's the worst. And, and, and Hank, it's, it's the worst. You know, like, if something doesn't happen, I think we might have to close the doors. I mean, Hank is embarrassed to open his mouth to say how his business is going. And it's skyrocketing. And, he, and he's like, yeah, I know what you're going through. He doesn't know what you're going through. He's having success in his business. And how did he get there is by listening to what the word says is, and then beginning to believe it in the heart and begin to speak it out over his business. He told me the day that he, he got that revelation and he just, he just started speaking. My business will succeed. I don't care. There will be people that will phone me. There will be companies that will want my business. And, and at that time, the companies didn't even know him. But they do now. Amen. Your belief system is different. You got to believe the word of God over, over, um, over what the word says. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. The world system is different than your system. You got to know that. It's different than your system. Stop imitating the world system. Stop going that direction. Like, you, you, if you think, you think that somebody that has great wisdom and he's doing something, he's doing something amazing. And, and I, my question is, first thing is, number one is, are you born again? Because without the Spirit of God on the inside of you, all it is is head knowledge, but head knowledge is not going to get you to when the pressure hits you to get you through it. It's like I was um, uh, heading to the funeral. I decided to go have some uh, lunch, brunch at Chorus, and, and I hear this guy, and he's talking about Russia, and he's talking not good things, and I'm, and I'm sitting there listening to him, and and he's talking to this table and he's telling them all about da da da. And he says, and you know, even this guy, even this guy, you know what? He, they, they threw him, he went over there for business and, and he was doing business for one year. And then the, then the government, he said the government, the government threw, them, threw him in jail and he's in jail. He's been there almost two years. And I just about jumped up and said, he got connected with the wrong mafia. I know. I'll tell you a true story. The, the very first McDonald's ever in Moscow was a Jewish man named Morris that I got to know. He's out of Toronto, Canada. And um, the, Russia would not allow the Americans to introduce a McDonald's in their country. But Canada... Yeah. This man had, this man, um, when, when McDonald's, who, whoever went to McDonald's when it first opened up? Anybody here? No, 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 in, in Moscow, sorry, in Moscow. Yeah. How long were the lines? Oh, around the block. Hours. I was the privilege to know Morris, and Morris would, we would drive up, in the car, and Morris would say, follow me, and we'd walk right in. Order whatever we wanted, and, and uh, away we would go. And all these people are like, who are you, you know? And anyways, one day, Morris, it, we're, we're in Moscow, and Morris says to me, he says, he says Doug, what are, you, what are you doing tonight? And I says, I haven't got really anything special planned. He says, can you come, uh, come and be with me tonight. He says, I have a meeting with a businessman. Who said, oh boy? <laughs> I said, I'd love to. So we went to this businessman's place. He's got a huge flat uh, apartment, huge metal door, and two guys standing out in front of the metal door. <laughs> and I seen the one guy go like this, and here's a gun sitting there, and I thought, Oh, thank you, Jesus. And I, and I could see why this Jewish man wanted a hedge of protection around him. He wanted me with him. We ate a meal and so on and so on. And, 
And we got done, done with the meal, and, and this businessman says, uh, uh, I want to show you something, and I'm needing your help. And uh, so we, we got up from the table, and we're walking down the hall, and, and, and there's this big bedroom, and he opens the door to the bedroom, and, and it's probably... Um, yeah, I, I was going to say, it's over half, but maybe two-thirds full. Two-thirds full. Like, this much. $100 bills. I don't know how many billion. U.S. U.S. $100 bills. In, in bundles. And he looks at Morris and he says, here's, here's what I need. He said, we'll split it right down the middle. You can have that half if you can get this half out of the country into a Swiss bank. When people tell me they get into the wrong company, Morris will turn around and he says, Doug, it's time to go. <laughs> right? Where is your belief system? Morris had integrity. His belief system is in doing what is right. Believing, he, he was a practicing Jew. Believe in what, what is going on. Are you confessing what the world confesses? Are you trying to get in, rub shoulders with him? Or are you confessing what the devil says about you? Oh, I'm not. I mean, girls, you get up and put makeup in the morning and all of you look in the mirror and you go, oh, hey, beautiful. I love you. You're going to have a great day today. Amen. I like that Amen. See, death and life are in the power of your tongue, right? Why, why curse yourself? Why, why curse yourself? Oh, man, I am, I am skinny. Oh, I have fluffy hair. I have curly hair. I have this. I have that. I'm too fat. I'm too skinny. I'm too tall. I'm too short. I'm, you know what? God created you. And to belittle yourself is literally belittling the creator. Don't, don't belittle him. He made you unique. There's not another one of you on this earth. You're special. Treat yourself special. Amen. I want you, I want you to read Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. And, and I want... Proverbs, sorry. Out of the Passion Bible. Do you have the Passion Bible? I want you to translate one word, and it says, you, instead of your words, you say my words. There. Say my words, okay? No, okay, we're going to read it. You're going to read it out loud. One, two, three, go. My words are so powerful that they will heal or give life. And the talkative person who hears them will be like a tree planted by the water. Those who hear them will never die. So all of you are going to go, mm, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to talk so much. Because what you talk, you, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, Remember? I remember when I got born again, I was so black and white. People called it prophetic. Prophetic, you were black or white. I mean, there was no gray areas. There was no, no mercy, no grace. It was like you turn or you burn. You take the mark of the beast or, and go to hell or don't. I mean, I was, just, I was just, if you don't believe me, you ask my brother. And, and there was no gentleness, no mercy in, in my, in, in when I first got saved, man, I would just blow you out of the water with, with the word of God. And the reason you're failing is because da 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 <laughs> Just like a machine gun going off. 
But the amazing thing was, I operated in all nine gifts of the Spirit, the power gifts. I've seen so many miracles. I've seen people getting healed. I've seen people uh, even raised from the dead. I I've seen all kinds of miracles. And, 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 and I was like the cat's meow. Like I was the guy that was working diligently for God, doing such amazing things for God. And um, one day, I hear this guy, and he starts teaching. And he's teaching out of Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 26. We're going to read this. Galatians 5, 22 to 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. This person said something which shocked me. Was that, was this. You are not anything until you're mature and walking in this fruit. And I thought, who do you think you are? I am operating in the gifts of the Spirit and have signs, wonders, and miracles follow me. I, I don't know, who do you think you are? It was interesting because he started to go through scripture. Oh my goodness. And, and, and one of the first scriptures he says, he said, uh, you, may you may operate and work in the nine gifts of the spirit, but there's a scripture that says, Lord, Lord, did we not, did we not heal people? Did we not do this? Did we? And he says, I do not know you, depart from me. And I was like, Whoa, he grabbed, that, that scripture just grabbed me. And I thought, what are you talking about? And I started to see, as he went through things, like 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 to 11, I started to see that I was very immature. I started to see I was selfish. I had pride. And the next thing the Lord revealed to me was pride literally took the devil down. And I thought, wow, I don't want to be in the category of the devil. I want to be a son of God. I want to mature. I want to change. Amen? So as I was... I was uh, let's go through that. First Corinthians chapter 11. You want to read it together? 13, sorry. Verses 1 to 11. Let's read it together. If I speak with the tongues of men and angels and do not have love, I become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, which I did, and know all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I have nothing. Whoa. I was operating in those gifts, but I wasn't operating in love. I had nothing. Let's continue. And if... I give all my possessions to feed the poor. And if I surround, surrender my body to be burnt, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Is not jealous. It does not brag. And is not arrogant. Does not act unbecomingly. You know, there, there was three things right there that I was. Bragging, arrogant, and acting unbecomingly. I, I'm thankful for the people that got saved when I was like that. But let me tell you, since that time, I have led a whole lot of people to the Lord through love than I ever did through turn or burn. Let's continue. Love does not seek its own, is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, 
does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. Never fails. But there's a gift of prophecy. It, it, it will go away. Isn't that interesting? But love won't. If there's tongues, they will cease. If there's knowledge, it'll be done away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away with. Let's read the last of this. When I was a child, I used to speak like a child, think like a child, reason like a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. Isn't that interesting? See, I was doing things, my own things, not wisely. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 7 says that very thing. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Be not wise in your own eyes. See, I thought I was, had the, all the answers. I was the cat's meal. I thought I was the wisest guy because I was operating in the gifts of the spirit. But I was not. Until I changed my attitude, until I started changing my thinking, and, st and, and when I started confessing, you know what? I will walk in love no matter what. When I started going, God, give me the eyes to see people the way you see them, not as I see them. Because I see them as, man, who needs these crybabies? Who needs these, da -da -da -da, all these, pe you know, Lord, give me eyes. And, and, and people would even come up to me and say, I, I remember one time we had a guy that was working in the, in the children's ministry over there. And uh, this is before I had any tattoos. And uh, this guy, he had sleeves of tattoos. He loved kids. And he was an amazing teacher. And he was over there working. And the, uh, the leaders at that time in my, in my, um, on my um, management team, we had a meeting just about this one guy. And they said, unless you tell him to quit, because we do not want any kids exposed to anybody with tattoos. And I said, um, it's interesting because I do know this. Every time he came, he wore shirts down to here. And you, you couldn't, you would have never known if he had tattoos or not. And he always wore, he, he, he was conscious of it. He did not want to influence anyone be, to get tattoos or anything like that. But before he was saved, that's what he was into. And so people, the, the people said either he goes or we go. I was like, okay, that's Fadanya. <laughs> somehow, and it wasn't through me, but somehow somebody went and talked to him. And all of a sudden, I noticed he wasn't here on Sundays. And I thought, where is the love? Where is the love that Jesus... I'm still in contact with him. I, once in a while, I see him. But I thought, it is so sad. Where was the love that we should have showed him and helped him, encouraged him, told him he was doing a great job. See, I was wise in my own eyes, but I wasn't wise in the Lord's because I wasn't doing James chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. This you know, my beloved brethren, but everyone must be Everybody must be quick to hear. Quick to hear. In, in another version it says, quick to hear and hear and hear. You ever, you ever wondered why God gave us two ears and only one mouth? 
Do you ever notice? You ever question, why did I get two ears and only one mouth? Why didn't I just get one ear, you know, up here someplace and, and one mouth? And it's two. I think he's trying to tell us, let's, let, us let us listen <laughs> and, and maybe listen again and listen again without giving our two bits of what we think is right. Right? I mean, I used to get into quite a discussions with uh, people at the Bible school in, in Eston where I grew up with. And oh my goodness, I, I was like not quick to hear. I just wanted to quickly tell them where they were wrong. And guess what? I was always right. <laughs> always right. If you think that you got pride and you're always right, marry a Russian girl. <laughs> she will soon straighten you out. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I, I love it. I'm looking forward to after Wednesday. I will find out. Quick to hear, slow to speak, and this is the other one, slow to anger. You ever been corrected? And you ever, ever notice that anger rises up in you like bang? And then afterwards you think, where did that come from, that anger? You know, you can take it as an opportunity to learn, or you can take it as an opportunity to stumble and keep on saying, it's not my fault, I'm right, right? For the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Whoa. And I remember getting into heated, angry discussions. And when I read this, they do not achieve the righteousness of God. In other words, I was not going to grow unless I changed my heart, my attitude, my talk, my everything. I'm, I'm teaching you this because the favor of God is really hard to operate in your life if you're in this area. Those of you that are watching. Because everybody here is good. <laughs> Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness, in humility, whoa, in humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. Wow. I was like, I think even though I was performing all of these things and doing all these things, my soul was not getting saved. I was in a war. But I decided I wanted all that God had for me. I decided to change my attitude. I decided to change my confession. I decided to operate in love the way God loved them. To begin to see them as God seen them. And begin to talk to them the way God would talk to them. I have so many people, I mean, chariots of light, I mean, different people, they always say, Pastor Doug, we just love you. You're such an encourager. And I'm thinking, that's what my father's like. He's not one to tell you how, you, how bad you are, how, how, you know, he may encourage you, change. If you'll change this thing, you'll grow to the next level. You guys are quiet. <laughs> I got to a place where instead of being swift to speak, I got swift to hear. When I got swift to hear, then I started hearing the way God's heart and things that were going through, the people were going through things. God wanted to help them through those things. God wanted to encourage them through those things. God didn't want them to stay there. God didn't want them to stay in that valley. God wanted them to, to tell you, I want to change you and increase you a thousandfold. And to prosper you. Amen? Amen? Did you learn anything today? Yes. 
Em, did you learn anything today? Yeah. Hallelujah. Those of you that are watching online, I pray that you seek God each and every day this week to, for him to show you areas in your life that you may need to change in order to mature and begin to act mature. And Father God, I thank you in the name of Jesus for signs, wonders, and miracles because the favor of God will happen in your life as you mature. The favor of God, you'll realize, why isn't it happening to me? I'm telling you, as you mature, things will happen in your life that'll be amazing. And I'll thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.